I think it'll be tomorrow instead. He was on the virtual class. You can set that down. I only use it for the kids' class. And then that was the day for today. Uh, more useful. Set that down. I only use it for the kids' class. All right, team, let's line up. Let's bow in. All right, ready, stance, attention, and bow. So we're gonna do a little bit of stretching, then Professor Tao is gonna take you through some conditioning exercises. So let's go through just kind of a full body stretch right here. Bring your arms up, stretch. Come down, reach for the toes, flatten your back out, hands down, you can jump back or step back, lower down to a push-up, flatten your feet, come up, back down to a push-up on your toes, push back, pedal your feet out, step your left foot up, twist, bring that left knee across to your opposite elbow, then back up, twist. Bring it across to the same side elbow. One more time. Up and twist, keeping the weight even on both hands. And step it to replace your foot here. Maintain strong posture. Come up right here. This position. Good. Just hold. Square off your hips. So back leg, hip is forward. Front leg, hip is back. And we're strong in this position. Good. Lower hand down. Twist. Bring that hand back, pedal out, bring the opposite foot up, twist, keeping the weight on both hands, bring it across to the opposite side elbow. Back up, twist, bring it to the same side elbow. Back up and twist, and bring it in to replace your hand. Make it strong right here. Find your strength with your hands still down. Hips forward and square, and lift up with strength right here. If you find your arms are kind of like this, you've got to lower your shoulders, but straighten your arms. So not shrugging, shoulders are down, arms are straight. Good. Lower your hand, twist your body, and then reach. back, pedal out, right here, Good. and walk your feet up to a wide squat position here, okay, push your knees apart with the strength of your knees, not by pressing your elbows, just here, and go ahead and use your hands if you need to, to come out, stretch your leg. If you can, flatten that foot. If not, it's okay. And come across, find your balance, and then add some challenge, maybe pick up one hand or both, if you're comfortable. And now let's just add a little bit of back and forth right here. Good. Side of the legs, right? Right here. You drop the knee and just bring the leg forward and back. A little bit of movement. Just kind of waking the body up, getting all your muscles ready. Next one, step the knee back, bring the leg forward. Good. Knee side to side. Good. 
Now, plank position, push-up position, all right? It's right here. Now you can do this one on the knees, all right? Um, if you like, or take it up to here, okay? And just alternate opposite arm, opposite leg. Back to plank, okay? You can kind of center one hand underneath, reach up, and then reach through, like you reach as far as you can this way. Back up, and then through. Up. Go ahead and switch. Find that strength in your arm, and then other side. Good. Just from right here. If you're comfortable, you can flatten your feet out. All right. You're going to sit toward your ankles. Stretch a little bit this way. All right. Just to get a little bit of a quad stretch and ankle stretch. Should not hurt. All right. And then let's just do some arm circles right here. If it's uncomfortable, just modify it so it doesn't hurt. A little wider. And all the way. Other direction, small circles. A little wider. And all the way. Good. Now, like you're taking the, uh, the cap off of a bottle in opposite directions, just kind of twist and twist, opposite way. Okay, should be primed for this uh, little conditioning circuit we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Todd. So find a little bit of space in your training area. Make sure you have some room. Get ready to sweat and work a little bit. And then we're gonna join back in and do some, uh, some Q&A and some other, uh, other drills. All right, team, it's that time. So we should be loosened up. So here's my goal. I'm gonna get that heart rate up. We're gonna go three six minute rounds, okay? Each exercise, I'm gonna try to switch it up every 30 seconds, so I'm gonna move quick. So if I move a little fast, just try to keep your body moving. If at any point that you need maybe like a little break, just take a little breather or walk in place and then just try to pick up where you left off. All right. So first exercise. Start off with 30 seconds. High knees. Let's go. There we go, guys. Keep it going. Gonna stay in shape. We're already in good shape. We're gonna not only maintain it, but see if we can exceed what we're used to. Come on. Very good. Next one, guys. Punches. Let's go. Right here. Just straight punches. Breathe through the nose. If you want to breathe out the mouth, that's fine. I'm going to breathe into my nose as long as I can. Controlled breathing. Keep it going. You can move your feet just like I am. You don't have to be stuck in the mud. Move those feet. Be on the balls of the feet. Keep going. We got about less than 10 seconds left. Coming up after this is mountain climbers. Here we go. Mountain climber position and begin. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds left. Stay strong. After this is jump squats. Ten seconds. Here 
Three, two, one, time. Jump squats, ready. Hop to it. Less than 10 seconds, guys. We're gonna do glide overs after this. Three, two, one. Nice and glide over. Get it going. It's like you're ice skating. Get a good glide. Next one's gonna be full body. It's gonna be a squat thrust. That's just like a half burpee. Then we finish the plank. Then we finish the last three minutes. Squat thrust like this. Down and up. Go. It's our full body. Ten seconds. Very good. Push up position, just like right here. This is gonna be our plank, but we're gonna do shoulder taps because I just don't want us to be staying in place, not doing anything. Shoulder taps, easy pace. If you haven't begun, you should be. Less than 10 seconds. Breathe. Three. Two, one, on your feet, Frankenstein's right here. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Let's go. High knees, go. Ten seconds in. Come on. Ten seconds left. In three, two, one, punches. Let's go. Move those feet. Put those hands up high. Mountain climbers are coming up next. Just under 10 seconds. Three, two, one, mountain climbers, let's go. The back straight, bring the knees to the chest. Get it going. Looking good, team. Keep it up. Less than 20 seconds left. We got jump squats after this. Get ready for it in just about 10 seconds. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Jump squat. Ready, begin. Stay strong, guys. It's our last 30 seconds, and we take a minute break. Come on, pick it up. Fifteen seconds. Come on. You can do it. Ten seconds. Come on. Stay strong. Stay with me. Let's go. Short time, short time, and time. Minute break. Catch your breath. Pace back and forth. Don't just drop and do nothing. Walk it off. Pace back and forth. You got 45 seconds. And then we start round two.
Less than 20 seconds. I'm gonna start us off on the planks. Since that one has very minimal movement, I don't want that to be one of our last things. I don't want you guys just to stop and do nothing whenever your heart rate is going really heavy. All right, let's get in position, come on. Push up position. Now down to your forearm, just go. 30 seconds. Hold it tight, squeeze the abs. Give me 10 of these, side to side with your hips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Get in push-up position. We got short time left, about 10 seconds. Okay, up on your feet. Squat thrusts, down and out. 30 seconds, go. You want to add a little hop, that's fine. If not, that's acceptable just to stand up. I'm okay with that, but just keep moving. Very good, Frankenstein's opposite hand, opposite foot. Less than 10 seconds. All right, push-ups. Let's go from the feet right here or on your knees, but keep your back straight. Go, non-stop. Shoot for 30. Five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Up on your feet, high knees, go. Stay strong guys, control your breathing. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Mount climbers, ready, get them down. And knees and chest, go. Ten seconds. And then we got jump squats. Good, up on your feet. Jump squats, begin. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Glide overs. Fifteen seconds. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, punches, go. Two. 
Squat thrust. Go. Push it, team. Let's go. Stay strong. Fight the mental battle as well. Can't give in to the fatigue. We got almost 10 seconds left with this exercise. Five, four, three, two, one, side to side, right here. Breathe, control that pace of your breathing. We got one more exercise before our one minute break. Those are down blocks. You're gonna be in your grappler stance. When I say down block, you, you react. Ready, grab the sands. Down block, down block, down block, down block. Again, move your feet. Down block, down block. Feet, move the feet, move the feet, move the feet. Time. One minute break, one more round. Okay, we got about 20 seconds left. I'm gonna try to, we did generic exercises to push our heart rate. I'm gonna try to get some sports specific movements and some grappling drills. If I say shadow wrestle, use your discretion, pretend like you're wrestling an imaginary opponent, but try to stay strict with your stance. Don't stand too tall, okay, not too low. Keep those elbows in and good foot movement. Ready, grappling stance. Shadow wrestle, let's go. Implement some shots, feints, setups. I know a lot of you got the space to do a single leg like this. Simulate a single leg right there. Good. Do like a mini sprawl, just shoot those hips out. Good, you don't have to bang yourself on the floor, just shoot the hips out. Hands down, hips out. Ready, sprawl. Shoot. Sprawl, shadow wrestle. Simulate grabbing for the collars, protecting your collars, breaking the grips. Okay, break ball. Triangles, explode those hips up, go. 30 seconds worth. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, let's mount. Ready, side to side, go. Focus, come on, move those hips. Fifteen seconds to go, come on. Phil. Size is very good. Three, two, one. Hip thrust. Knee down, knee up. Pop them up. Alternate. Go. Less than 10 seconds, come on. 
Three, two, one, shrimps in place. Alternating sides. You should be going already. Ten seconds to the next exercise. Break bridges of your shoulders. We're almost three minutes to go, team. We're at the halfway mark of this round. Get those hips up. Very good. Break, mounted arm bars, close your hands, angles, back and forth, one knee down, one knee up, pivoting, back and forth. Five seconds. Up on your feet, shadow wrestle. Go. Implement your face, your setups, your shots. Do your shots as best you can do in the space that you're permitted at. Good. No half sprawl. Shoot the hip out. Good. Again, sprawl. Hands down, hips out. Shoot. Again, shoot. One more time, shoot. Very good. Let's finish strong, guys. Jump squats. Ready. Explode. Fifteen seconds. Five seconds. Then we glide. There'll be one minute left. Glide side to side, smooth. Three. Control that breath. Less than a minute to go. We're going to finish off with high knees. First 15 seconds, I want a good pace. Last 15 seconds, we're going to go as hard as we can. Ready, guys? Five seconds, we begin the high knees. Ready, high knees, good pace, come on. Solid pace, guys. Almost there. Finish strong. Ready, hard pace, go. Hard as you can, guys. Fast, fast feet, fast feet. 10 seconds, come on. Finish strong, finish strong. Five seconds, four, three, two, and Time. Walk it off, guys. Take a breather. Come on back. Mr. Travis is going to hit us up. All right, Michael Quinn is back. Indiana. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay, so look here. We're going to be doing a couple of drills uh, with posture. We did this a little bit this morning, and I want to uh, go over a few drills, uh, demonstrate how some of them you know, work in a real situation, and then we'll take a little bit of uh, Q&A, right? So the first drill right here is pretty simple. I imagine I'm kind of in the closed guard. I'm on my toes, as long as you don't you know, have a hurt toe or anything, we're trying to be on your toes here, right? My uh, my hands are basically positioned as though I'm like holding the hips and I'm going to be pushing my lower back out, right? The way that looks in this situation is kind of here. And what that, um, that movement does is counter the pressure of the legs pushing into the feet. Now this is real simple. I'm just stepping, right? When I step though, I want to step and maintain the integrity of my posture. One, two, up. And then I come back down, right? So 
what I see sometimes when we do this drill is a lean, right? Like this. Or a stand up and then bring the leg through. But when you have that weight on you, you don't have a part to practice with. It is important that we practice like one, two. Okay, hips are still low as though I've got weight bearing down on me. Back is strong, and then I stand tall. And then I'm just going to return for a few. So let's do just a few of these. This is simple, but visualize you have that weight. If you have a partner and you want to do it with a partner, you guys can do that. Um, let's just do it right here. So hands are here. One, two, up, back. I can switch sides. One, two, up, back. Okay. And really think about how strong your spine is when you do this. Everybody's moving right now. Let's go. So step, posture is good. Second foot comes up, knows my posture remains intact, and then I stand tall. All right? Keep it going. A couple more seconds. Good. Okay. Now, oh, Phillips got the grappling dummy. That's awesome. Now, if you have a, uh, a grappling dummy or a person or not, you can still do this one. Now we're going to work on the power, okay? On this one, I'm going to put my hands on the floor, right? To mimic um, kind of pinning like the arms. So I'm going to actually lower myself a little bit just for this. And then I'm going to pop myself up, stand tall, right here. Hands, pop, stand up. So now I'm trying to do it instead of the stepping, and you can still do the stepping if you like, but try to pop up, find the strength in your position here. Like if you had to lift, a thousand pounds from here, you wouldn't go with your hips first. You would lead with the head, right? So that's how I want to see you do this. Okay? So keep with this one. A few, a few more reps. Everybody's moving. Good. And I want you to think about when you pop up, if your head is leaning forward in a way where you would lose your posture. Like if I'm here, I'm definitely getting pulled in and at risk of like a high guard threatening my arms, right? So here, boom. My head is up, my back is straight, and I'm standing tall. Good. One more. Okay, now we can continue with that one, or just the stepping, but let's try to build a little bit of power, okay? Standing in the guard can sometimes be tedious and slow. Other times we have space and opportunity to really um, get up and stand up quickly, right? So here I'm gonna build a little bit of power. I'm on my toes again. I'm sort of sitting down, right? And I want to use the spring of my lift, my hips coming forward, and my arms to help me with this drill. Right here. And then I stand tall. Again, this should not feel uncomfortable on anything. If it does, go back to one of the other drills we're doing. I'm also trying to land a little bit with control and not stumble. So I can do that rather quietly. And then stand tall. Okay? Let's do it. Good. And try to land uh, on all points of your feet, on your on your heels, the balls of your feet, so you've got good uh, contact. You don't feel like you're off balance when you do it. Keep going, team. Everybody's everybody's coming up. Good. Nice. Very nice. Good. So let's talk about that for a moment. If I have Professor Ty, and he's got me in the closed guard right here, right? My hands can be in different positions of control. Lapels and sleeve, double lapel, hips, biceps. It also depends. Do I want to maintain my posture and break low, or do I want to stand? Mostly I'm standing, right? If I feel that I'm finding a good black belt who can threaten me in the closed guard, I want to be here as little time as possible, okay? So standing, I'm either typically controlling one of the sleeves so that they cannot um, use that arm to, uh, to hook my leg. I might be controlling the lapels where I can cross threaten a choke where he, he wouldn't tap from it, but it would keep him pinned. Or perhaps, especially Nogi, controlling the arms, right? So when I'm doing this, I'm trying to pop up to a position right where I can control the hips here and stand tall, right? So he's not able, even if he hooks my leg right now, his hips kind of isolated, as opposed to if he hooks it 
and he can kind of move his uh, his hip over, right? I kind of yeah, where he can yeah start to change his, his angle and go for some of those suits. When I hold the hips right here, even if he releases his guard right now, I've got him pinned, right? I'm in a good position, but he's stacked on my leg and this leg at the same time. So that detail of squeezing the knees and controlling makes a really big difference, okay? Um, a question this morning uh, that was really valuable was, what do you do when your posture is really broken down, right? So it's got me broken down and they have kind of a high guard, like they're threatening front. What I don't wanna do is try to stand up with my hips because the more my hips come up, the higher his guard walks, walk the legs up a little higher. And now I'm pretty much done, right? But I can't lift my head up either because he's got too much weight on my legs. So I wanna go away from that pressure. So I can't come up, I go forward. I stay in this line so he's not able to move left and right. I go forward. I'm typically keeping my hands right about here, right? That allows me to have some kind of steering wheel control. In a fight, I can actually cup the back of the head or in some no-gi match if I can do that um, to curl his posture in. But if I find my guard broken way down and legs up high, I kind of grab around the head. Yeah, here, I'm just crowded. My legs are up and I'm punching my shoulders through. And now that high guard is not a problem. And now I'm already there. Then again, up, pushing, ready to start passing. So posturing up when you're in danger, obviously uh, can be dangerous. I have to take care of the danger and get into a controlling position before I start working that posture. So I'm just talking a little bit now. So that's posturing in the guard, right? Let's talk about stand up a little bit, okay? So on the feet. So uh, a jiu-jitsu match can be like a wrestling match and it can be like a judo match, but it's neither one. And so the approach has to be kind of a modified blend of, uh, of the two. You can have a preference for one, but you're going to run into difficulty and be exposed if you try to play it just like that. So you'll see a lot of judo players kind of cross grab their collar and come up like, like this, okay? What's the problem here? What's gonna happen to me right away? I'm getting taken down immediately. Boom, right? Now, the other side of that, a really low wrestling fence that's just like prime, like a, like a super low wrestling fence here. I can approach low, but I can get a grip here and really use that grip to make my partner's life difficult when it comes to the stand up here. And I'm not gonna talk so much about guard pulling because that changes things too. If you're gonna pull guard, you can many times skip everything and just touch one collar and sit down. But let's assume you wanna get the takedown, they wanna get the takedown. I have to protect the wrestling game and then I have to win the grip game. So typically I'm gonna start off a little more of a wrestling stance here until I get my collars and go ahead and tie up right here. And now I have the freedom to posture up a little bit more, okay? But unlike in judo where you can't really attack the legs, I still have to worry about the legs. He can still pop down and grab a single leg if I'm not cautious. So what we do is we play postured, but we play a little bit of back and forth, but maintain the posture with my spine, even though I've been here. So if we're moving, let me get a little bit closer. If we're moving here and Professor Todd wants to uh, shoot for a leg, right? Oh, I still back away. I've got my grips. My back is strong, but I bent at the hips right here, okay? And then of course I can start working better grips. Boom. And look, even though like when I grip this belt, even though I'm, I'm uh, kind of a little closer, if because of my grip change now, if he tries to come down and grab my legs here, too strong, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind when kind of thinking about posture. I see a lot of mistakes, even people that like to kind of wrestle with poor spinal posture. They're kind of here and they get kind of slammed to the mat, especially with that gear on, because it's such a strong grip. So we tend to stay a little bit here, tie up, and now I can get a little bit taller. So I can back away to that. I'll sometimes back away to break grips, and now I can come in. Now, 
If I've got two grips and he's got one, I feel a little more confident standing tall because I've got two grips. He's got his left hand, the one on my sleeve, that he can maybe shoot in for a, a leg if he wants to try, but he's very weakened with my grip control, okay? So my point being with all of this is whether I'm separate, uh, separated and more in a wrestling stance or I'm gripping here, the integrity of my, like what I'm doing with my spine has to always be intact, okay? So when you're drilling, any drills, I mean, this goes for a lot more than just stand up or pass the guard. Ask yourself, how is your spinal alignment, right? Because you'll find that um, in many positions where you feel stuck or unable to move, you had your neck twisted, you had your, your spine bent, and you weren't able to move the way you thought. By keeping your back straight, you're much stronger. Let's do one more drill that I really like for this type of um, idea. It's, uh, it's the kick the mouth drill that we do in the floor series. And then I'm gonna open up for some questions here, okay? So the reason why I like this one is because I need to be really engaged and strong in my spine uh, to be fast with this movement and be, and be powerful. So when I step, I'm lifting up here first. I'm not coming with the foot first because then I have full posture, right? Lifting here and stepping. Now, I want you guys to exaggerate this hand motion, okay? This is gonna speed it up. So my hands are already kind of primed for this position. You guys can follow along with me, right? And when I swing, you're gonna see my arms are gonna really, like I'm running, they're gonna uh, kind of switch and then come back. So, very exaggerated. When you do that, you're gonna be a lot faster than if you just, and you let your arms kind of dangle freely, okay? And now do it, do it like the lazy way and then do it the black belt way, right? The lazy way, and I look, even my balance was kind of garbage right there. The engaged way, way faster. And I feel like a magnet, like I come right back to my spot, right? Okay, so stay here a few reps and we'll do a few here, then we'll slowly rewind it and we'll switch it. Let's just do the kicks, go ahead. Make sure you're loading up the arms. I feel like we're really doing like some ninja training. Good. All right. Now, tuck that back foot in. Raise that knee off the ground. Bring it behind you and control the land. Switch that. Good. Now, again, lift with the hips and raise your, uh, your head and your shoulders up, right? Like in jujitsu, jujitsu makes you more confident anyway you're learning how to choke people, right? So feel that confidence in your posture all the time. When you're walking, when you're drilling, everywhere. Don't have some shoulders, be tall. Okay, so one more time. So up, step, okay? Again, shoulders are not, they're not back, but they're not forward. They're right where they should be, okay? Kind of load up the arms right here and go. Good. Do a lazy one. You'll feel, just feels off. Now, do a black belt one. Good. All right. So, I like that because you have to have speed, power, and movement all working together while focusing on the right posture. Um, I promise you guys, we can take the concept of posture and apply it to any position in jujitsu and likely make it better. An offensive winning position, a defensive losing position, and you will see how often posture comes into play. That's not to say there aren't positions where we are balled up. Obviously, an S mount setting up an arm bar requires me to crowd a little bit. But stretching that arm, right? That's a temporary bend in my spine. Once I get the arm, then 
my posture becomes important for my strength, okay? So um, yeah, think about how that applies to a lot of the different positions. And now let's open up for a few questions that you might have. And it does not have to be about the posture game that we're working. Um, I mean, I'll try to connect the ideas if possible, but it totally doesn't have to be about that. It can be anything that you guys would like to look at. Michelle, you're, once again, a silhouette. It's totally dark. And I can see your name. All right. Oh, I think the girls might outnumber the guys today. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, sure do. Nicely done. All right. Who has a question they would like to ask? No questions. Okay. We can just repeat the workout again. Michelle, I have a question? You have one, Michelle? Or are you just waving? Or were you trying to say, like, I, you can see me now? Yeah, I can totally see you now. Deanna, how are you? Good? All right. Very nice. Um, Bailey, numero uno, and Mona. How are y'all doing? All right. Michael Quinn, give me the yellow thumbs up emoji if you're doing well. I have a question. Yes, Nabita. You were talking about like if you're in guard position and someone has you or your posture, you go down and the, their legs are higher on you. Yes. Can you demonstrate? Say one more time and kind of cut out at the end. Demonstrate that again. Part where you're in guard and they have you broken down. Can you demonstrate yes. how to have that position? Yes, definitely. So um, I'll show. Uh, Kind of a couple ideas. One is a little more sport and one's a little more uh, MMA, right? So if I'm in position here and Professor Todd has got his legs locked in kind of off, what I'm trying to avoid is I'm locking over my shoulder joints, lock that leg over. Once he anchors that in, it's very dangerous, right? I have to quickly like drive forward and likely I'm going to lose right here. Right. This is almost a situation where I feel like I almost have to time him throwing his leg over for the final arm bar and then hope that I can somehow spin out of it. So if you get, which I probably wouldn't have there because he had both my arms. If you get that far, you've uh, you really got yourself in trouble. But if your posture is broken and he's got a high guard and he's not there, I'm just driving on my toes. Right. So I'm driving on my toes here and I'm driving my weight forward and I'm keeping my elbows kind of pinning his shoulders right here. Now with the gi, I like to hold the lapels here, right? Because once he kind of lowers his guard a little bit, now I can start to come up and I'm actually punching. My left knee is pinning and I'm holding here. And this might seem like, are you giving him uh, an arm bar? Not at all. He tries to go for an arm bar here. He's immediately, um, I'm immediately free to, to break out of that position, right? But I'm basically keeping myself parallel to him, moving my head up even with his, so he cannot follow me. And the control I have, either pinning the arms or holding the pelvis, keeps him from kind of moving back. Now, in like a no-gi match where they allow this, or in MMA, go ahead, I guard again. Yeah, I can actually come up and cup right here. See this? And he's not gonna stay there very long. He's gonna, but I can hang on right here. And guys will even use this to punch and control. And what you'll find for like the MMA version is in some fights, the person on top who achieves that position, they don't even try to pass the guard because they can, they've got the hip so controlled and the posture so broken that they can deliver more damage trapping the person in that balled up position than they would if they stepped over to like a half guard or a closed guard, right? So the main, I know most of us are more interested in like the kind of the gi, the jujitsu application, but the concept is the same. Crowd the space that they need to walk their legs up high and hang out there a little while. Like guys that play the, the rubber guard and everything, 
for one, you cannot let them get that leg really high. So when you start to feel like, oh, I'm not able to posture, they broke my posture and they're walking up high, you immediately go for the head. Legs up, that puts pressure, uh, lifts their hips off the ground, grabs them. Head forward, controlling the head, either the lapels, shoulders, cranking the neck if you can, with that can open in tight position. And you sort of wait it out. If they're really, really flexible and they feel like they, you know, the types that can put their feet behind their head so you're, you're not crowding them much, you don't rush the posture up because you're giving them exactly what they want. They want that high guard and they want you to give up the arm. So you have to stay in that sort of low position, ride it out, wiggle the shoulders free until that guard starts to lower down, all right? Make sense? Cool, okay. Let me get back on the gallery view here. You know, and while, uh, while you guys think of some questions, I also like to bring up, Professor, how what a vital point that this concept is today as far as posture. And I really, especially everyone here that's on today, to understand this where whenever you have grapplers from other grappling arts come in and they start as like white belts in jujitsu, like for example, wrestlers or judo practitioners that come in, they already have a good knowledge of posture. So you might have more knowledge of them on in regards to jujitsu technique, but you allow them to sometimes discourage you whenever like their posture is so strong from their previous experience. You feel like, man, I'm just, I'm not getting anything done. Like this guy just comes in on his second week and he's already just mopping the floor with me. And you can't look at it that way. You just got to see that he's very experienced in one aspect, a very important aspect of grappling, which is the posture. And you're just, your skill levels are just kind of in different as different points of your career at that point. So typically at the white and blue belt level, you'll see the grapplers from other sports excel. And then once you guys start to put it together at blue and purple belt, you start to see it's like, hey, you know, you start getting gaining that confidence in your overall game, your posture and your skills on the mat. So that's just one point I wanted you to know, throw that, in. Like that reminds me, um, th this happens a lot of times in jiu-jitsu when you have a, an athletic person that comes in and they haven't trained before, you, you know, another person has been doing jujitsu longer, but it seems that this, this person who was maybe an athlete, let's just say not even a, a grappling art, let's say like football or, you know, some, some other sport and they start doing really well. And we tend to think like, well, they're not that technical. They're just athletic. Well, remember athleticism is based on proper technique running, you know, the, the elements involved in being an athlete in another sport tend to, um, tend to include much of what we need in jujitsu. Totally different movements, running with a foot, catching a football, all that stuff. Um, but to have strength and power in your position still comes down to your posture and how you do that. So that's why there's a better kind of crossover when you have that. And there's something to be learned from that mindset. Like, well, why is this athletic person beating me? They're just too athletic. Well, what are they doing technically that's actually giving you um, the problem? So um yeah really good point do we have any any more questions team are we good have we learned a lot or are our brains just totally saturated no do we want one more we want one more technique raise your hand if you want one more technique okay good let's take a vote here then all right we can do i'll break it down into uh, a couple of options we can do a guard pass, a guard sweep, a submission, or a takedown. Pick the one you want. Don't change your mind. And now, raise your hand if you want a takedown. Two, all right. A guard sweep. Two, three, that's it. A guard pass. Mona, yeah. All right. What was it? A guard sweep? That was the one, right? All right, a guard sweep. Now, do we want basic closed guard or advanced open guard? Now everybody has to vote. Basic closed guard, raise your hand. Advanced open guard. It's a tie. All right, we're not doing anything. I'm just kidding. All right, let's, um, let's look at something right here. Close guard. I'm gonna make it kind of basic. 
My opponent has good posture. They did everything we were talking about today, right? I'm unable to break the posture and things are not, you know, kind of working for me. And he decides to stand up, right? So he goes to the stand up here. Now look, between here, where he's still a little bit lower and stand all the way up, and here, I need to be making some type of move because once he gets here, he's so established in his posture that anything I do is like, my guard is weak as soon as I let go, all right? So when he's still kind of low, can I come back for me one more time? All right. As he's still low, he starts to stand. I'm right here looking. Now, I'm hooking here. Now my first sweep, you guys know we call the muscle sweep. I'm just pushing here. What I'm trying to do is chunk this down as my knees come up and twist in the direction of that. Now, yeah, I'm not trying to actually sweep too much on this one because what I want to do is, the, what I want to show you is the one that happens when they don't fall, okay? So in order for him not to fall, if I do this right, he's probably going to take a balancing step with his other leg kind of separating from me, which gives me the freedom to come up into a single leg position. One, two, three. So what's happening there is I'm going for it and then I am doing a lot of like the drills that we do where we come back and we kind of catch ourselves on a, on a foot, right? I'm keeping the leg, I'm coming all the way up and then popping up. Let's look at it one more time from this one. All right, partner stands up, right? I'm turning right away and I'm getting relatively close, okay? This hand might still be holding the sleeve or this sleeve if I'm thinking Oma Plata, this sleeve if I'm thinking arm bar, or if he starts to posture up, I'm thinking about this muscle sleeve but he, he keeps his balance by stepping back. Right here, I kind of keep pushing. So I separate from here. And I like to post on my leg here so that he can't uh, drop his weight down easily and crowd me. And then I rip my leg up with what? Everyone say it, good posture. Oh, tall. Now I'm in this position. Now I did kind of a switch. I can also catch the heel right here and do some fancy takedowns. But either way, I'm in position. I like that one, the tree top the best to finish my takedown there, okay? Um, that's one that, you know, Shanji actually does that one quite a bit. And the reality is in the real match, they sometimes put you in like a crucifix, but if you're based up really strong, you're going to knock them off of you, right? They might be kind of like a crucifix position on top of you, but you just come up and dump them. That's happened all the time with Shanji does. They always go for the crucifix and he always drops them. And that happened to me in a match when I was a purple belt. The, my opponent did that to me. I put him in a crucifix and I rolled right off the bat. And I was so mad because I thought like, you know, when you're sometimes like lower belt levels, you think, why well, did the move right? You just muscled out of it. No, he didn't. He did his move better than I did my move. He got to a stronger position than my position was and, and I uh, put, was put right on my back. So it's the muscle sweep to the, I didn't have a name for that one. I'm sure it has a really cool Brazilian name that I don't know, but um, does anyone have any questions on the mechanics of that? I forgot we're out of, we're out of time now actually, but any, any last minute questions that I can answer in 10 seconds before we bow out? Everybody understand it? Yes? Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining. Amazing class, great participation. Thank you guys. We will see you tomorrow. We're going to end this class right now. And then, um, so if you're logged on for Muay Thai, just uh, log back on again and we'll get started. Thanks everyone. Excellent work. Oh, we got to bow out. I'm sorry. We got to bow out. First of all, I had to remind me. Ready, stance. Feet together and bow. All right.
Boy, I starting in just a minute. 